you. This is truly a worldwide tournament. All right, and with that, we're going to do a little live solve here using on shape. So I'm very excited about that tournament. Uh, very excited to, very excited about that tournament. Very excited to see all of our runners. Tutaltoby.com slash tournament if you want to get in on that. Uh, but with that, we're gonna we're gonna now take a look at a little live solve using on shape 3D modeling of this component here. So this was something that I posted on the YouTube channel uh, last week. A little practice models challenge. What is the total mass of this multi-body part in xxx.x grams? And to solve this thing in on shape, or really to solve this thing in any 3D CAD system, you want to start out by asking yourself some kind of fundamental questions. You want to start out by asking yourself, you know, how am I going to address the fact that this is two parts instead of one? How do I deal with multi-body, multi-material? Should I make it as two separate parts and then make an assembly? Or should I make it as one single part using multi-body and multi-material? And I think the answer to that question lies in this note here. The steel part, which is this part here, the steel part matches the plastic part geometry. So the bottom of this steel part, you know, it kind of comes down and lands in the bottom of this pocket, which is a curved pocket in two directions. It's curved this way, but it's also curved this way. So with that being the case, whenever you have geometry that needs to match up with other geometry, you probably want to do it as a multi-body part, or in the case of on shape, a multi-part part studio. The steel part matches up with the plastic part geometry, so it makes sense to just do this all in context or to model it up all in one single, one single part environment using multiple parts or multiple bodies. So with that being the case, now we need to start thinking about how we're going to model this thing. And I think since the steel part is going to be um, extruded up to the geometry of the plastic part, it makes sense to kind of tackle the plastic part first. And then once we get to the steel part, all we really need to do is make a new plane 105 millimeters up from the base of this part and then make a 32 millimeter diameter circle and extrude that circle down into that pocket. So another reason why I think it's important to model the plastic part first. So then the question becomes, well, how do we model the plastic part? And I think I'm going to model this plastic part either doing a revolve or doing a sweep. Now, a sweep is certainly an option, but I think that maybe is kind of overcomplicating things. We can see here that the radius down to the very bottom of this part here is 160 millimeters. So I think what makes the most sense would be to create a sketch of this shape here and, and then include, sorry, create a sketch of this shape here and then include a center line 160 millimeters up from that shape and then just revolve that shape. So that is how I am going to approach the beginning feature of this model. And so then the question becomes, well, where should the origin be in this model and what should the first sketch look like in this model? Well, we just talked about what the first sketch is gonna look like. It's gonna look like this shape here with a center line up 160 millimeters. So then the question becomes, where should the origin be? And I think that in this part, because we've got center line symmetry in this direction, because we've got a lot of dimensions that seem to be coming from this location right here, it makes sense for the origin to just be right down there, right at the bottom of that plastic part. So now we've come up with a basic game plan. Let's do a screen capture of this part. I'm just gonna use Windows Snipping Tool to do a screen capture of this part. I'm gonna move that screen capture over to my second screen. I'm gonna jump into Onshape and I'm gonna create a new document here in Onshape. So create a new document and I'm gonna name this document 24-08-11 MB hand tool and that way if you ever want to search for this document if you want to see how i built it if you want to look back through the history of how i built this model and all the the different features that i was using and all the different steps that i took along the way you can do that just by searching in the public space in on shape and so now i'm going to uh, show my keyboard overlay here that way you guys can kind of see the keystrokes that I'm using. And we've got a basic game plan, so let's start following that game plan. And then, of course, if we get stuck, we can uh, we can modify that game plan along the way. So here we go. So to create that revolved shape, I'm going to start out with a sketch on the right plane here. Right plane, begin a sketch, and then I'm going to press N to get normal to. Now I'm using the S key to bring up all these different commands. I'm just pressing the letter S on my keyboard to bring up all these commonly used commands. And so I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a, um, a vertical line here, and then I'm going to just create an arc. 
just kind of keeping this, you know, pretty straightforward here. So we'll take the center point of this arc and make it vertical. So I use the letter V there to make that vertical. We'll create a horizontal line here. And then for this vertical line here, I'm going to press the letter Q on my keyboard. And what that does is it changes that line to be construction. And what that does is it lets me window everything and then press the mirror button and mirror that whole sketch over. And so now I've set myself up very nicely to simply add a dimension here of 10 millimeters. And then add dimension from this point to this point down here of six millimeters and finally add a width dimension here from this vertical line to this vertical line of 40 millimeters and we can see that now the sketch is all black which means the sketch is fully defined that's always what we're hoping to do in 3d cad get your sketches fully defined that little move that i did there was i'm, I'm using in my profile i'm using the option for solidworks uh controls for the mouse so i used the wheel to zoom out and then i did a hold control and then I'm pressing straight down on the on the wheel, the middle mouse button. That's how you pan in. It's how you pan in SolidWorks. It's also how you pan in OnShape if you go into your OnShape profile and set the mouse controls to use the SolidWorks controls. Uh, that's really helpful when you're going from SolidWorks to OnShape. It really helps with that transition. So now the final thing I'm going to do in this first sketch is just draw a line up here. Again, I'm going to press Q on my keyboard. That changes that line to be for construction. And then I'm going to add a dimension that goes from this point here to that line, representing that 160 uh, uh, radius, a 160 radius to the bottom of this handle. And so that sets me up to do a revolve. This revolve is going to use this as the revolve axis, and it's going to go to a depth of... Let's just say I do this in one direction. I don't really have to do the whole thing here. I could maybe save a little bit of time by just doing half of the model. So this is going to go to a depth of 84 over 2 degrees, 84 slash 2. So I don't have to do that math in my head. I, I don't have any idea what 84 divided by 2 is. Just kidding. It's the answer to life, the universe, and everything. And so now I'm going to go to a fillet command, and this could either be a full round fillet or it could be two fillets at 20 millimeters. Um, either way, you're going to end up with a nice full round here. The customer is calling out a full round fillet, so I probably would opt to do it as a full round fillet instead of doing two um, edge fillets there. So let me press the space bar, which clears all my selections, and then I'll go around here to a full round fillet. So that's face side one, face side two, and face side three. Same geometric results, but by using the option for full round fillet, if this width increases from, uh, let's say this this uh, sketch here, the width increases from 40 to 50, well, when I rebuild out, that full round fillet is going to rebuild. If I had done it as two 20 millimeter fillets, then I would have to also update that fillet dimension. So full round fillet, good tool to know about, kind of makes things a little bit more efficient when you have a, a scenario like this. So now I'm going to jump into a shell command, and that's because there's a note on this thing that says there's a four millimeter typical wall thickness for the entire handle here. So we'll shell that out to four millimeters for that typical wall thickness. And then I'm going to go to my top plane and begin a sketch. So S key sketch. And on my top plane here, what I'm going to do is press N to get normal two, And I'm going to create the circles for that little plastic sleeve that's sticking up. So I'll create a circle here. This is going to have a diameter of 40. I'll create a circle here. This is going to have a wall thickness of six millimeters. So I'll press S, jump into smart dimension, and then give this thing a wall thickness of six millimeters. And then finally, I'll just drop in a line here that just kind of uh, closes this, this thing off. And now what I can do with that sketch is I can choose S key extrude. See, I've modified my S key. I did a right mouse button customize. I modified my S key so extrude just shows up on there. And then over here in the extrude command, I'm gonna say that I want there to be a starting offset of 40 millimeters so that when I go to begin this extrusion, it doesn't start out at the top plane. It starts out 40 millimeters above the top plane. And then I'm going to say reverse direction for that extrusion. I'm going to say that I don't want the entire sketch. I just want this region of the sketch. There we go. So just half of the region of the sketch instead of that full circle. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I want this to go up to a body or up to a part. So up to a part, and it's going to go up to this part here. Now, at this point, I could either choose to make this a secondary part so I could go in here and say new, and then you see I get a second part down here, maybe with a different material, or I could choose add. So the difference between new and add is going to be that we're going to get an additional part down here in the part studio, kind of like making a multi-body or a multi-part part studio. So I'm going to say add here, and then once I say add, now those parts are merged together into one single part, and that's that's what I want. 
So I hit the check mark. There we go. That gives me one half of that plastic handle. Now I'm going to choose mirror and I'm going to say I want to mirror this entire part and I want to mirror it about this face here. And we hit the green check mark. I'm going to go down here to the, the name of that part in this multi-part part studio. I'm going to press shift N and I'm going to rename that to plastic handle. I'm going to right mouse button on that part. I'm going to say edit appearance. I'm going to make that kind of like a black or a, a, maybe like a dark gray, dark gray color here. And then I'm going to right mouse button on that part and I'm going to say assign material and I'm going to assign the two tall Toby custom material, two tall Toby custom material of ABS. So that's one part in this multi-part design. And now, just like we talked about earlier, the second part should really be a simple process. I should be able to just pick the top plane, begin a sketch, get normal to, S key, circle, and make a circle here which has a diameter of 32 millimeters. Now, just like we did with that circular sleeve, we can do S key extrude, and we can come over here to starting offset and make this starting offset 105. So now the beginning of that extrusion is gonna start out 105 millimeters above the top plane. So we take the top plane here and we just bump that up 105 millimeters. Now let's reverse the direction of that thing and let's say up to part. And last time when we did this, we said we wanted to go up to the plastic handle. We used the option for add, which merged this extrusion into the existing part. This time we're gonna say new, which is going to create a new part down here, which means we're going to be able to assign a different material to that part and leave ourselves with a multi-part part studio. Kind of like designing multiple parts together in one single environment. And the reason we're doing that is because we want this extrusion to go right up to that curved surface on the bottom of the handle. So we're going to say new, and we're going to say up to part, up to that plastic handle. And then we're going to finish this, this part off. Let's, let's hide the plastic handle. So we can see there this new part, it's picking up on that curvature down here on this bottom face. It's picking up on that curvature that's at the bottom of the, the plastic handle. So we'll show that again. And then we're going to choose the chamfer command. So here's the chamfer command. And we're going to chamfer this with a distance of 8 millimeters by 45 degrees. We'll pick this edge here. 8 millimeters by 45 degrees. That looks good. We will right mouse button on the second part and choose assign material. And this one is going to get a material of, let's go to the Two Tall Toby custom material of plain carbon steel. And so we hit the green check mark. And then way down here in the corner, there's an option for mass properties. Way down here in the corner. So we click mass properties. We click this part and this part. And the total mass I'm coming up with here is 627.8 grams. So I'll type that one in, 627.8. Type that into the chat. And let's see if we got it right. We'll go back to the PowerPoint here. And the correct answer is 627.8. Oh, yeah, we did it. We got the correct answer. So... If you guys like that kind of a, a tutorial, a live solve, be sure to hit the like button. If you're watching this in the recording, be sure to hit the like button. Be sure to subscribe. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you thought about this tutorial. And uh, that is your live solve for the 24-08-11 MB hand tool. Little example of doing a multi-part part studio in on-seat with multiple materials.